could give a perfectly fine speech today about increasing investments in girls' education around the world. But I said I wanted to be honest. And if I do that, we all know that the problem here isn't only about resources. It's also about attitudes and beliefs. It's about whether fathers and mothers think their daughters are as worthy of an education as their sons. Yes. As an African-American woman, this conversation is deeply personal to me. The roots of my family tree are in Africa. As you know, my husband's father was born and raised in Kenya. And mem members of our extended family still live there. I have had the pleasure of traveling to Africa a number of times over the years, including four trips as First Lady. And I brought my mother and my daughters along with me whenever I, I can. So believe me, the blood of Africa runs through my veins, and I care deeply about Africa's future. Now, the status of women in Africa is also personal to me as a woman. See, what I want you all to understand is that I am who I am today because of the people in my family, particularly the men in my family who valued me and invested in me from the day I was born. I had a father, a brother, uncles, grandfathers who encouraged me and challenged me, protected me, and told me that I was smart and strong and beautiful. And, and as I grew up, the men who raised me set a high bar for the type of men I'd allow into my life. <laughs> Which is why I went on to marry a man who had the good sense to fall in love with a woman who was his equal. And to treat me as such a man who supports and reveres me, and who supports and reveres our daughters as well. <laughs> Leadership is about creating new traditions that honor the dignity and humanity of every individual. Leadership is about empowering all of our people, men, women, boys, and girls, to fulfill every last bit of their God-given potential. And when we commit to that kind of leadership across the globe, that is when we truly start making progress on girls' education. Because that's when families in small villages around the world will demand equal opportunities for their daughters. They won't wait. That's when countries will willingly and generously invest in sending their girls to school because they'll know how important it is. And we all know the ripple effects we can have when we give our girls a chance to learn. We all know that girls who are educated earn higher wages. They're more likely to stand up to discrimination and abuse. They have healthier children who are more likely to attend school themselves. My ancestors came here in chains. My parents and grandparents knew the sting of segregation and discrimination. Yet I attended some of the best universities in this country. I had career opportunities beyond my wildest dreams. And today, I live in the White House, a building Today, I watch my daughters, two beautiful African-American girls walking our dogs in the shadow of the Oval Office. And today, I have the privilege of serving and representing the United States of America across the globe. So my story 
and the story of my country is the story of the impossible getting done. And I know that can be your story, and that can be Africa's story, too.